Good evening, everyone, <clears throat> and thank you for coming to Deb Chanel's 48th World, where we do soap opera reviews. On this evening's episode, we're going to be talking about The Young and the Restless that aired today, Thursday, June 2nd, 2016, at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is my um, time zone. To let you know who's going to be the players in today's episode, we have Victor, Paul, Jack, Phyllis, Abby, Ashley, Jill, Victoria, and Ben. Okay, let me give you a little summary also. Victoria bonds with Meredith. I'm sorry, Victor bonds with Meredith. Stitch and Abby receive disturbing news about Max. And Phyllis works overtime to cover her tracks. So, just to give you a little tease of uh, understanding the scenario. Uh, when we go into saying Victor bonds with Meredith, basically we're going over that Meredith has pretty much become Victor's confidant. She's definitely over superseded the barriers of, um, <sighs> how can I say it, of her medical license and patient confidentiality. She has gone far from that. And she's going to try to sleep with Victor Newman in the jailhouse, y'all. Who does that? Who does that? She could definitely be, her license could definitely be taken. Stripped from her, okay? So, when we go, when we're talking about Stitch and Amber sees disturbing news about Max. Max, uh, were well, the physicians at his behavior hospital that is trying, that are trying to help Max with his disturbance, recent behavior, um, negatively speaking uh they wanted to do some test results some brain scans on him and um uh, they pretty much told him what they were addressing the x-ray exams for and he didn't go in depth with abby or ashley because those are the two he's having a conversation with uh, prior to him actually getting the test results but they end up finding max has a, a um a large um massive i should say tumor on his brain and it's at a difficult point of operation uh, or operating on it it's very difficult so i don't even know if they're going to even try to do it and that may be the cause of max's recent behavior that have been deemed for the negative and dangerous you know because the things not clicking up there because the mass or the tumor is taking up so much of his brain making things not work properly so they're just saying it could have had that effect on him uh, or to a certain degree of his actions he's been displaying uh in the past recent uh latest episodes okay then we have phyllis works overtime to cover her tracks what that basically is saying um when billy woke up from his little concussion he had from falling off of his motorcycle however the accident transpired uh, he was wearing his, um, what do you call it, helmet, and that really protected him from any major damage to his skull and his brain. And, uh, he was thinking that Phyllis, you know, was on the ride with him, and she pretty much told everybody they both were involved in the accident. But, um, little did he know, uh, he almost spilled the beans. Um, he had to say he was in an accident by himself because Phyllis didn't own up that she was in an accident along with him. But somebody's going to find out more so Jack because, you know, he wants to see his wife naked. And when he said that big ass bruise on the right side of her shoulder blade up there, you know, past her boobies. Oh, child, I don't, I don't understand. I don't know why she keep lying, you know, make, trying to cover up, cover up, cover up. And it's just coming to surface. Even Victoria feels it. Even Bethany even goes in to tell her. You know, she's the one. She's the woman. And all of this kind of stuff. But anyway, we do a little recapping as well from last uh, shown episode. Which was, you know, last time we saw it. We didn't have these um, pretty much issues yesterday. Because they were just doing a, a dedication to um, Mrs. Chancellor's uh, wing there. Naming after her. her. Uh, so we go recapping from yesterday. Well, you know, from previous episode. We have Jack, Jill, and Victoria running to the hospital uh, along with Phyllis um, well she don't get there when they do but she do uh, finally arrives to see what is going on with Billy and how much damage he done did to himself this time then we have Phyllis is in a seedy bathroom uh, looking at 
the bad mark that she had from the accident that her and Billy was just in. She's not going to be able to hide that with makeup, guys. That's how serious it is. Um, then we just go right on into the scene itself. We're shown the first scene of the day with Abby and Ashley, both at the lab, going over research strategies on how they want to present it to the consumer. They're having a little here, small talk, this and that. Uh, then Abby uh, gets a, what do you call it, a ding or a voicemail, noted, a voicemail message from her social media accounts stating the latest news on Adam's uh, scandal with possibly have murdered, uh, being in the cahoots of he may have uh, cooked up a story where he's being seen as being a murderer towards Constance, Constance Bingham's death. They talk briefly about it, but you know, it is what it is. Um, we go to Victor and Paul. Um, Paul is visiting Victor in jail. Said it seems he's getting uh, very well settled in to his new digs. And, you know, they make nice nasty to one another. Paul is talking about uh, some of it being poetic justice, especially if his son Adam ends up right in the next jail cell to him. Uh, Victor is trying to not cooperate with Paul because he knows Paul is just there for a fishing expedition. That's all. And he pretty much said, I ain't finna give up my son. I'm gonna make y'all make y'all earn y'all work. Y'all figure it out yourselves, okay? But then we go to Phyllis. Phyllis has arrived to the hospital. Victoria is saying Billy is a trip. They were just here five months ago with the same uh, circumstance. Him being involved in a motorcycle accident. He's throwing caution to the wind doing plain Billy uh, all day every day you know without thinking anybody else is gonna uh, not be involved with his shenanigans okay then we go to Phyllis and Jack Jack's, Jack is asking Phyllis where was she uh, during the dedication ceremony where did she run off to you know and she's don't know what to say because right now she's in a lot of pain probably because that bruise on her right shoulder seems like it's giving her an ache uh, we go to Ben Ben comes out out to address the family about Billy uh, he's saying he's wanting to um, get some x-rays on him and then he can pretty much ascertain how much damage Billy has done to himself once again. Uh, then we go to Abby and Ashley. Ashley is asking how things are going with their relationship, meaning her and uh, Ben. Ashley is also asking is she uh, doing okay, meaning, you know, still grieving from her loss. Okay, we go to Victor and Paul. Paul is talking to Victor about Adam and their relationship. Paul is saying, you didn't truly embrace Adam. Uh, and why was that? You know, not like, you know, you had with your daughter, Victoria, and, and your son, Noah. It was just a whole different family dynamics when it came to Adam. Uh, Paul says, Adam is your mirror image. Victor disagrees. Paul is saying or asking Victor, did uh, he have anything to do with framing Adam for Constance Bingham murder? And, of course, you know, he says, no, I sure didn't, you know, whatever. Um, then we go to commercial, we come back, we're still on Paul and Victor. Victor's telling Paul he decided not to give Paul the long version. He stated, um, I, no, I didn't have, no, I didn't frame Adam. Paul is not giving up easily, Adam, to, uh, to help Paul do to him what he wants to do. So basically, Paul is not giving up. He's still thinking Victor know a lot more about this situation, if not set up the situation himself. Um, Victor goes in to tell him, look, I'm not helping you try to get Adam off. I'm not helping you try to uh, get Adam in, you know, saying he's guilty. You're going to have to do your job, Paul. You know how to do your job. Let me do mine, okay? And I don't have anything to say towards you when it comes to Adam. Okay, we go to Victoria, Jill, Jack, and Phyllis. Victoria wants to go in to see Billy. Um, after they have gotten the news that, um, well, no, they're on the outside. They hadn't gotten the news back from Ben yet uh, about the test result. Um, but this is conversation just really going in between uh, Victoria and Jill. You know, she wants to go in and see and talk to, um, you know, um, Billy about his concerns and why he had the accident, what happened to cause him to have an accident, and this, that, and the other. And then Jack and Phyllis have like a sidebar between them because he's still trying to be concerned about, you know, what's going on with her again. You know, same spider senses is going on, but you know, Jack loves to stay in the abyss when it comes to him even thinking Phyllis is having an affair with any man. We go back to uh, Dr. Gates and Paul. Paul is interviewing Meredith about Victor. 
Meredith is Victor's uh, doctor, or the only doctor I should say, pretty much is there on uh, staff as far as um, tending to the inmates. But, um, you know, he's trying to figure out what actually does Meredith know uh, about the situation or the dynamics of why Victor got put in jail, who's been coming to see uh, him far as his family dynamics, and why did she pretty much take up with Victor when, you know, yes, Victor is this charismatic type gentleman. He's well, uh, wealthy beyond your dreams. And... He's nice looking and this so he can see the obvious, but he thinks um Meredith is just being a little bit too much involved with Victor and he's really um thinking that Victor may have confided in her uh with some information that he could po possibly use against uh Victor. So, uh we we are there with that. And, of course, he's trying to catch Meredith in a lie that he can bring back up to her to use against her and Victor when he goes in to help the prosecutor, uh, which is his wife, Christine, uh, ascertain as much information to either pad on some more time for Victor other than 10 years he's already sentenced for, or, you know, to seek justice uh, for Constance Bingham, which is the ultimate uh, thing they're trying to do. Because uh, a murder is insinuating that it happened and it might be doctored up uh, by Victor or some other person because uh, they're kind of, Paul is pretty much kind of believing that Adam is innocent without saying it okay we go to Ben and Ben is telling the family he's okay uh, meaning the family meaning Victoria, Jill, Jack and Phyllis about Billy's uh, shortcomings with a, uh, indeed another accident uh, he says there's no damage uh, to Billy's brain or head or, you know, however you want to see it when it comes to Billy and his thinking. Um, so all of them ask, can they go in? He says, sure, but don't stay too long because, you know, he just want to get him some rest because uh, his head did get shaken up. You know, he's kind of bruised up. So, you know, don't stay too long. Let him get a little rest. Um, and all of them go in except for Phyllis. I don't know where Phyllis done took herself to. Uh, Billy wakes up and he acknowledged them all in the room, but he starts asking about is she okay? So Victoria's like, you know, who is, who are you talking about was okay? Uh, was there somebody else on the, um, bike with you? And of course she doesn't see Phyllis in the room, so he goes on to really kind of break it to him. Like, yeah, Phyllis on the my bike with me, but then, um, Phyllis, uh, slides herself on in where he can see her. And Victoria still goes on and says, well, the, um the good samaritan that called in your accident uh i don't know if that was her or whatever but no one was found at the scene but you you were the only one at the accident so you know he's looking at phyllis like damn you didn't tell them we almost died girl please but anyway he goes on to say it was bethany which is that uh new bartender they have gotten brought in for i guess some short cameo scenes because she they ain't really filming her but it is what it is. He takes the fall and he lies on Bethany. And Jill knows who he's talking about. or know of her. And she can't believe it either. But it is what it is. And then Victoria gets very hot, pissy, mad. That, you know, he was having, you know, somebody else on the motorcycle. Being carefree. And, you know, doing typical normal thing that he always does. And it just made her mad. And she just left the room. And um, that was pretty much for that scene. Uh... Then we go to commercial. We come back. We have Billy. Billy's still going on, going to say it was Bethany that was on the bike with him. You know, filling it in. Everybody, you know, getting upset with him, especially his mom, Jill. We leave that scene. We go to Phyllis and Victoria. Uh, Victoria walked out the room previously before going to commercial, and Phyllis runs back out to her, trying to uh, tell anybody that would listen that hey. Um, Billy wants to be with you, Victoria. Y'all don't have to have ups and downs, this and that, whatever. But really, Phyllis is just trying to throw um, the, what do you call it, the situation off of her. She wants somebody else to be in the love triangle that Billy has or the single line, you know, uh, where it don't connect back to her that she actually is the person. But, you know, Victoria breaks it down to her saying, look, you can say whatever you want to say. But Mr. Billy has his love interest on somebody else, and it's not me. She can feel it. 
So we leave that scene. We go to Travis. Travis is remembering what he heard Victoria say at Catherine's dedication ceremony, especially the part about donating five million dollars, and of course being a Newman. But he was just really brewing over that situation that she had five million dollars, and not one time did she offer to give him twenty grand for his uh, particular incident he's having at his establishment with the air conditioner unit. So we move out of that situation, we go to Paul and Meredith. Again, Paul is trying to find what Meredith knows about Victor, behavior, and his demeanor, and other little things he may have told her as a sidebar. Uh, Paul goes on to say, Victor's lucky to have you as an advocate on behalf of you know him, and, and, and making sure nobody really get any dirt on him, because you're doing a very good job. So, we know she's lying out the crack of her teeth and, and her side of her neck. And she's going to get caught up in a legal battle. battle. Um, then we go to Ashley and um, Abby. And both women are still talking about how she's still handling things. Meaning the loss of her child. The loss of Max being in a mental institution. How's Ben treating her. You know, separate from all of those issues. Then Ben comes over to see Abby at the lab. And he addresses both women by telling them they wanted to do tests on Max um, as a part of his, um, what do you call it? Consultation and evaluation of him being at the facility. Just to make sure no abnormalities are going on or, you know, stuff of that nature. So they're asking him to sign off on some papers to give them permission to um, do x-rays on his son. And he, of course, gives them um, the right to do it. And they go on and perform their tests. Okay. Then Ben is taking, uh, telling them Max may have, you know, a brain cancer. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, because we go to commercial, we come back. But he's discussing that with them. Uh, just to... Let them know what was, uh, why they were wanting to basically check him out. Just to make sure it wasn't that thing, uh, medically wrong with him. He's kind of sound and stable within his mental capacities. Uh, just an additional test they want to do. Because sometimes that may be a, a warning factor or the main factor why a person acts out or had been acting out. Uh, more so because it's, uh, it's under, what do you call it? They're out of control under the circumstances of thinking. Um, they have a medical issue that's making them act that way. So in a sense, they're not, they shouldn't be tried for something that they had no control over, you know, in a sense. So, uh, we do that situation. We go to Meredith Gates and Victor. Uh, Meredith telling Victor Paul came by to see her and she didn't say a thing, but Victor wants to repay her somehow, you know, for not telling him confidential information that they discussed off the record. Uh, and it had nothing to do with his um, medical health issues. And, you know, it's like she done, you know, she, she done gone in a bitch, y'all. She done threw her license away to practice medicine. Because, uh, you know, she just, oh, that woman just crazy. Anyway, she done fell under his spell, pretty much. And Vic, um, Nikki tried to tell her, you know, he's very charismatic. But he's uh, self-centered on getting what he wants. He don't care who he uses. He tries every tactic out of the book. He can't help himself. That's just how he, he deemed to see himself. Because his father was like that. So, it is what it is. Um, we go to Phyllis and Victoria. Phyllis is still trying to tell Victoria it's her Billy wants. Victoria said no. It's hard. It's with someone else. She finally leaves that disturbing situation. And runs on over there to see her boyfriend, Travis. We go to a commercial. We have come back from the commercial. We're with um, the doctor and Victor. Vic, uh, Meredith Gates wanted Victor to have dinner with her. She totally gave him... Okay, she's totally gone from reality. She thinks she's dating someone that she can actually have a relationship with. When Victor is set to be in jail for 10 years, I understand what she's talking about. He already... Oh, girl, he gonna need a cane and, 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 and some walkers to go with the pushing rollers. After a while, I don't know what she's talking about. But anyway, honey... Uh, she thinks she knows Victor, but Nick already done told her, you don't know this man. I've been married to him for a lifetime almost, and he done did a hell of a lot to me and my family. So, you know, she gave a warning, but it seems like she's going to have to go deep to the depths of hell, experience what Victor can put you through, and then come back as a survivor, hopefully. 
Uh, then we go to Victoria. Victoria's gone to visit her friend, like I said, Travis. And they pretty much get into a heated argument because he's going over everything that he saw for his own eyes and what he heard with his own ears of Victoria or Tori, a.k.a. Victoria, lies. Okay, uh, we leave there. We go to Jill. Jill is asking Billy, why did he bring up that bimbo's name in front of Victoria? Did he not know that it was going to ignite her? Uh, just like a catalyst to oil or what do you call it? Catalyst to a switch to make a bomb? No, the nitro to the glycerin to make a bomb. Then you got boom. And he's saying, um, don't worry. He has at least more four more lives before he'll be discounted and um, be detached from this world. And they're like, they're not hearing it. Jill's still going off on him. Jack, he's pissing Jack off about the whole spews of coming out of his mouth. Everything that's coming out of his mouth, he's spewing. Uh, we leave that situation. We go to Phyllis and Bethany. Phyllis done took her ass on over to... Uh, the athletic club since she know Billy has named Bethany as the person riding on the back of his bike So she goes over there, you know, I, I don't know, but Phyllis needs to sit her ass down really She need to have the whole auditorium of seats and just make sure she go to each one of them And I hope that it's two, two, 2,500 I'm talking about 2,500 seats she has to go sit down individually and maybe, maybe she will get tired of her own ass and see what we feel like looking at her on the uh, screen acting ridiculous You know what I'm saying? Oh, she goes over there to 411 Beth and if anybody come asking her Billy wants you to say that you were on the accident with him I mean you were involved in an accident with him this that and the other I mean I, I don't know I mean how could you be up working behind a bar standing on your feet but you were just involved in an accident both of y'all on the bike both of y'all were in helmets but he's up in the uh, hospital getting test results you know done and all this that but you behind the bar slinging drains what is uh phyllis talking about she she's so smart she's dumb at the same time you know what i'm saying but anyway uh she's crazy as hell but anyway she knows beth is not buying that shit she's saying why would i why would i say i was with billy when billy couldn't even remember my freaking name then she goes on and said well yeah he remembered it because he said bethany that's why i'm here trying to tell you he's gonna need you to possibly vouch for him she said, I ain't vouching for him. And, you know, to ante up the thing that she may feel that would get Bethany on board. She said, well, you know what? Uh, no, I think you're the one. You, I'm sure spot on right. I mean, that girl, uh, they call it intuition, is like 100 plus and then some. She called um, Phyllis out. She said, uh-uh, honey, he ain't interested in his ex-wife. And he's interested in you. And Phyllis couldn't say a goddamn thing. Like, damn. Who am I that transparent? Do, have all of them had the same perception that it might be me? Billy is, you know, I'm like, honey, give your husband a cue, a clue. Because he has it and he lost it somewhere in the abyss. But yes, Phyllis, you're looking a fool. You're looking a hot mess. And Jill hadn't even been around you. And she's sensing something off your crazy ass that you may be the woman. Not Victoria, not new, some other new um, unknown love interest is you you're in the family you're the spy okay so pretty much her her reign is coming to an end she need to go on separate from jack go on and get her lustful feelings out for um billy if that's what it is because to me he never really had a successful relationship with anyone and same as victoria so maybe they're just glutton for punishment to end up with each other when they get old like um Nikki and Victoria, I mean Victor. But anyway, uh, she goes on to offer Auntie up the little uh, predicament that she finds herself and Billy in. She said, well, I can guarantee you that Billy will offer you $10,000 if you say you were with him. I'm like, Phyllis, 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 Phyllis. Ain't nobody gonna care about no freaking accident unless Billy was in the wrong and he hit somebody else that they'll be seeking damages and they you know investigation will be done and people will question this that and the other other than that why why are you asking this woman to lie why are you frivolously throwing money around like that hey i'm giving it to the victor numerous uh i mean uh chancellor catherine uh chancellor's dedication memorial wing that's they still need money honey especially with uh people that's poor or indigent that need to come and seek services that don't have any money you know what i'm saying save it for those kind of people all right i understand you too much but anyway 
commercial people we go to commercial we come back we're on ben ashley and abby ben gets a call from max uh clinic that he's uh being housed at and um whoever it is is going over the uh, medical uh, diagnosis and um results that had came back from the x-ray exams they had took on him and they're saying max has a brain tumor and Ben goes on to say he has a huge mass on his brain and it's difficult for the surgeons to operate on. So he don't really know what they're going to do. And again, he might not be the same person as we know. He may come out as a vegetable. He may come out with little speech uh, or, you know, can't do anything. He might be laying up there like a vegetable, you know, just there, you know. And that's no quality of life. So he's thinking way, way, way ahead of time. And he don't forgot his spiritualness and all that. So it is what it is. We move from that situation. We go back to Billy. Billy is saying that uh, he just had this high euphoric feeling on his bike. And if only you knew what it was. And Jack said, I know what it is. I know exactly what you're talking about. We've all had that. But we're not as uh, ruthless and, uh, what do you call it, uh, disconcerting such as yourself when it comes to safety and paying attention to what you're doing. Then we go to, uh, Jack is asking Jill, isn't it about time for her to go to the airport to catch her flight? Because Colin has several meetings set up for the next day that she has to be a part of. And she was saying, oh, her plans has changed. She's going to stay with him with her babe and this and that. And Jack said, oh, no, 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 you're not. Uh, Billy's a grown-ass man. Billy's going to do what he want to do, whether you're here or you're not. Billy ain't going to be up in this hospital. They already pretty much clear him. They're just keeping him for observation. Uh, making sure he gets no uh, negativity torn, turned towards the worst. Because, you know, anything can happen. They take test results. They do this. Then something else happens. You know what I'm saying? And a blink of an eye. But he said, hey, me and Ashley got this. We need you back in town. Because Billy, you know, help uh, requires more uh, things to be done. We'll let you know. Okay. So she's pretty much like, yeah, you're right. Billy going to do whatever hell he want to do. And Jack like, uh-huh, I told you now. So we go to Bethany and Phyllis. Phyllis is saying, uh, is she on board with the $10,000 that Billy may be offering her? And pretty much Bethany is kind of amazed about it, kind of intrigued, but she hasn't said whether or not she's going to do it. Uh, then we go back to Victor and Dr. Gates. Uh, Dr. Gates wants to have sex with him. Okay, she done had a little light dinner. Done talk, talked over uh, certain key aspects of why Paul had come to visit her and what he was trying to get out of her. That she didn't play his game. She's 100% Team Victor. And then she goes on, well, Victor said, okay, well, uh, I had dinner with you and it was nice, but now I got to go back to my desk. I mean, my cell. And then as he gets up to leave, she tells him no to stop. So she goes past him, locks the door, he gets on the other side, and she starts undressing in front of the door. So we can only imagine that they having sex because the next scene that comes on tomorrow is showing they have switched up doctors on his ass, okay? So I don't know. Maybe she's going to go to her daddy and plead for forgiveness and advocacy and uh, a, a pardon and clemency for Victor. Because nine times out of ten, she probably didn't take no safety precautions like having Victor um, wear a condom or whatever. And that woman going to probably come up pregnant. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, uh, her career is gone. Gone, you hear? Uh, but Victor can take care of her, honey. She, he can, she can go into the fashion industry. It doesn't matter. What the hell about it? I mean, she ain't wearing no clothes like that. But I was just giving you an example of what she can do. Because Victor got money. But then it looks bad on Victor because they... Uh, no, he messed with the, you know, well, then they could say she threw herself on him. That he'll get an attorney to fight hard for him on that aspect. So, he'll just be in there for them 10 years. You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. Uh, we go to the fat last and final scene. We got Travis and Victoria. They're still fussing at each other. Uh, Victor Victoria starts pushing the wrong buttons uh, to Travis. And he tells her to get the hell out of his establishment. Uh, and you know, Victoria's just there looking stunned, uh, perplexed, confused, you know, like, what the hell did I say and do? I'm like, what did you not do, Victoria? A.K.A. Tori, lying from the jump, you know. But we'll see what happens, guys. That's what I have for The Young and the Restless that aired this Thursday, June 2nd, 2016, Eastern Standard Time, 3 o'clock, my time zone. 
Okay, I'll look forward to narrating and giving you my images of uh, each day's episodes of my soap opera reviews, such as The Young and the Restless. Okay, guys, see you later. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye.